Hi there, my name is Gareth Jenkinson from Cointelegraph and welcome to the very first episode of Beyond the Game, Exploring Crypto in Sports. We're joined by a very special individual, A.B. de Villiers is his name and he is a South African cricketing icon. He's widely regarded as one of the best to ever play the game. Ironically, we're not here to talk about cricket today. We're here to talk about crypto more specifically. Um, AB is becoming an ambassador of a new Web3 investment platform built on Ethereum. We'll touch on that a little bit later in the interview. But to start things off, AB, I think myself and all of our viewers would love to know how your journey into Web3 began. Uh, did it start with Bitcoin and Ethereum? Are you a hodler? We're dying to know. I actually learned... Uh about crypto the first time through my brothers. Um, I was very, very skeptical. Uh, I always am of any investment they take on. <laughs> um, but they, they're big believers in XRP and Ripple. Um, and since about 2016, 17, they started um, playing around with that. I just turned a blind eye completely. Didn't want anything to do with it. Only a couple of years later, I was actually um, in the gym one morning and I was I sort of downloaded this this app and I just started to follow um, some of my favorite stuff. Obviously, the markets as well, gold and commodities, um, but also the Nasdaq and S&P 500. I just found a bit of interest, started reading a little bit about the markets around the world. And then obviously also crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP were my first interest. Uh, and um, not long after that, I, I started investing a little bit in XRP, which did pretty well over over. 12 to 18 months and um, I found myself in Dubai in 2020 I think if uh, if I'm not mistaken 2021 where I heard about NFTs for the first time and um, I, I know this friend Jonathan Woolley lives in Cape Town good friend of mine um, and um, I actually just literally just randomly asked him what do you know about NFTs and he gave me a long list of pointers um, where to start download your MetaMask wallets it was all very confusing and complicating so that was my first introduction to crypto and also NFTs, and I've been involved ever since through lots of ups and lots of downs as well. Yeah, definitely plenty of ups and downs. Uh, I think the same thing probably goes for cricket. Um, just out of interest, why was XRP something that caught your interest over Bitcoin, the preeminent cryptocurrency, or even Ethereum, um, which pioneered smart contracts? Yeah, obviously Bitcoin and Ethereum are the, possibly the two, the two safest crypto assets if, if there is something like that. Yeah. Um, but I've always had this interest in XRP. Um, obviously, through my brothers, I started um, reading a bit more about uh, about the coin, about the whole sec filing and the and the lawsuit that's going on. And I quite like that about XRP, this controversial nature of the coin and and, and the pain it's been through um, because of this uh, sec lawsuit that's been going on for ages now. Whatever the outcome, I do believe in. The blockchain technology and web3 i think it's it's revolutionary it's it's going to be it's it's there's no doubt about it in my mind that it's the future i want to switch it up to to nfts because i think there's a lot of synergies between sports and nfts um and it's a massive space you know in america you've got things like nba top shots which are revolutionized taking highlights packages and you know turning those into digital collectibles uh, you've got things like board apes um i wanted to know if you've acquired any interesting nfts um, over the years, um, uh, what have you dabbled in, AB? My favorites are um, obviously the Mutant Ape Yacht Club. Board Ape is a little bit expensive for me, and I'm not prepared to spend that amount of money. <laughs> um, Neo Tokyo, a citizen, I bought one of those. Imposters, I'm a big believer of Elliot Trades and Alex Becker and what the guys are trying to do. They're quite um, controversial on Twitter. This journey will just grow and grow as time goes on. I, I do believe the NFT industry will have a boom pretty soon but we'll we'll see about that um, other nfts um quite a few actually I, I owned up to 300 at one point wow and then comes the little curveball so I, I i was a victim of a scam which really set me back big time um i, I sort of lost a bit of faith I, I was involved for 18 months at that time when that happened to me um it was around the pudgy penguin um project which i also believed in big time <laughs> and uh yeah, but anyway, I, I was victim to a scam, lost quite a bit of my investment there, of my portfolio. Um, but I'm still involved. I still have my some of my NFTs, not all of them. Obviously, a few of them disappeared, um, unfortunately. But that's the nature of the, of, of the game. And um, I, I guess if you don't do your research properly, if you're not very diligent, diligent in, in what you do, um, I made a couple of mistakes and, and it cost me dearly.
just out of interest, Davey, maybe you can chat a bit more about how the scam took place uh, so our viewers out there can get a better understanding of how social engineering works um, and how quickly you can actually lose control of your digital assets and, if you're unlucky, uh, lose everything. I was really guided well by, by Jono, my friend. Um, his first rule was always never to touch anything that doesn't look like it's legit. Uh, visit the website, um, go to Twitter, make sure that they are they are hundred percent legit. Even go into Discord, uh, Telegram. There are so many different platforms to verify this and to make sure it's a it's a legit project. Obviously, the the budget penguins are very legit, but the the little pudgy hoodie that arrived in my on my main page on MetaMask was obviously wasn't legit. Um, I, I never thought anything like that could actually end up on my main page. I always saw um, it in the hidden box, but um, for one to appear on the day that Budget Penguins um, on Twitter released something about it, uh, there will be some drops and for the long-term holders. And so this little hoodie appeared there. I didn't want a hoodie, but I thought it's pretty nice. You receive a, a, a pudgy hoodie. <laughs> and that's what I fell for. I, I tapped on that. It looked very legit. There was a $1 gas fee. The minute I hit that gas fee, um, it stalled. Um, I hit it again. I hit it about five times, which ultimately meant that I gave this guy access to my whole wallet. Within minutes, uh, I saw some of my NFTs starting to be be removed. Luckily, you can only remove, I think, about 15 NFTs at a time. Um, I can't remember the exact number, but I, I saw a batch of 15 go, and I was like, that's weird. What happened? And I immediately started calling some friends. Um, panic, big, big time panic. It was absolute chaos. And ultimately I trusted my friend. He gave me his address. I sent the remaining batch of my NFTs to him, luckily in time. And, um, yeah, I'm still in the NFT game. I'm, I, I won't give up, but, um, hopefully never fall for something like that again. Maybe your involvement in the Web3 and crypto space is uh, ramping up a little bit. Uh, you've become the ambassador of a new project called Commonwealth, uh, which is a Web3 investment platform built on Ethereum. And as I understand it, it allows retail investors to gain access to invest in early stage projects or companies. And that's something that's typically reserved for venture capitalists, right? Um, uh, the proposition is pretty interesting. You can invest in a variety of funds and uh, projects. You can get access to your capital through an ownership representing NFT. And you can take that, uh, you can hold it, you can fractionalize that NFT, you can sell it depending on uh, what you want to do. Um, out of interest, AB, why did you decide to get involved in this project and um, how does it resonate with you? I've always wondered, how, how did the early investors get involved with the board at Yacht Club and all the new amazing projects out there? Yeah, And I, I think that is a really, really big issue out there is um, not to give the common person an opportunity to get involved with with good project, good or bad. I mean, we, we can't all just invest in the good stuff, but um, just to have an opportunity. Um, as you know, it's reserved for VCs mostly and the retail investors always come jump on a bit late, um, sometimes to the downfall. Um, and I think that's where Commonwealth is completely different. It's a fund, you can invest in the fund, your average person can do so. And I think that's, that's groundbreaking. Um, whether you're a person that's got a job from nine to five, you don't really have time to to sit in front of your laptop all day and have a look at different projects, do all that homework. Um, these guys will be investing on your behalf. Um, and as you said, you can you can buy a fraction of NFT. You can you can literally spend fifty dollars to whatever amounts. And and the trick in that is it's liquid. Um, as you said, I'm not exactly sure whether it's immediate or a day or two, but it's yeah. not like your normal investments where you sometimes have to hold on to your funds for eight to 10 years in the, before it becomes liquid. And becoming an ambassador in the cryptocurrency space, obviously uh, you have a huge sphere of influence uh, in the world of cricket and in the world of sports, you know, many millions of followers on your uh, various social media channels. Um, it does feel like you have a bit of a compelling story to tell in alignment with this project. Um, it's built on blockchain. Uh, it's built on Ethereum. It's it's giving people access to investment in Web3. Uh, is that a compelling story that you you feel like you you want to align yourself with going forward uh, now that your cricket career is uh, behind you? I feel 1,000% confident about this. I know the people that are on board. I know the people that have created this. Um, and I, I, I understand the simplicity thereof. And even, I, I mean, that's, that sort of resonates with my upbringing as well. And, and us people in South Africa, the way we were brought up, with our different cultures, the racial issues we've had in the past, um, different people with privileges, other, others not. I think that's the issue around the world and this project sort of tackles that and that resonates with me. I, I love the fact that the common person, that's why it's called Commonwealth, um, 
can get an opportunity as with the most wealthy person out there and um, the guy who has been involved with this space for 10 years who knows all the tricks the ins and outs this just gives you a level playing field it gives everyone the same opportunity maybe just to finish off with the crypto side of this conversation obviously it seems like behind the scenes you've been uh, pretty involved in the web3 space already you know uh, dabbled in in nfts um and uh, invested in in various cryptocurrencies um do you see yourself uh, being more involved in this uh, Web3 and crypto space going forward? Um, uh, can we expect more of this from you? I'm still involved. I'm not going anywhere. I, I truly believe in the technology. I believe in the space. As I said, I could never put my finger on which projects will work, which won't. I have the fear that I believe in. I do my research, research with that. I follow certain people. I'm, I'm on this, in this space every single day of my life, whether it's 30 minutes, sometimes two hours. I just like to know what's going on, follow the right people, um, I always have enjoyed following Elon Musk. Um, he's quite controversial on Twitter, yeah. obviously, as well. But you follow the right people on Twitter, you get a, a decent understanding of what's happening in the space. And, and then you do your own research as well. All right, Avi, I thought we'd finish off the interview with some cricket-focused questions. Obviously, my, my background in sports broadcast means I have plenty to ask you. I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet, um, starting off with uh, your favorite team to play against, your favorite opponents. Uh, I think I know what the answer is going to be. Since I was a little boy, I think I was five or six years old, I <clears throat> quickly learned um, with my family that Australia is our biggest rivals and that's the team to beat. <laughs> so, there's no team that even comes close to when it comes to com competitiveness and um, especially to travel there, it's not an easy place to travel to. <laughs> they really get behind their boys, so um, it's always been Aussie. Off the top of your head, uh, the worst bowler to face, uh, was it uh, any particular seamer? Or maybe one of the trickier spinners out there? The first guy who comes to mind is Shoab Akhtar. Um, facing him was... I never felt that he's going to get me out all the time. Um, but just like you knew if you missed the ball, you would be in a lot of pain. So there was that fear factor. Rashid Khan um, in the T20 business, especially at night time when you can't pick the ball, those are one of the guys you feel like, this guy can get me out at any minute and I'll have to sort of be proactive and take it to him, get him off his game. And those are the guys that you're never comfortable and playing against. All right, Avi. Thanks very much for taking the time to chat to me. It's been a really long and enjoyable conversation. I look forward to seeing your involvement in the Web3 space going forward. Uh, I hopefully look forward to hearing more of you in the cricket commentary box. If uh, that's what you're going to be doing more of in the future, that's fantastic. Uh, thanks very much for your time. And I look forward to catching up with you very, very soon. Yeah, it was nice talking to you as well, Gareth.